As you will soon be able to tell in this episode, I was a little under the weather. And so, we forgot to do something super duper important. Even though we may have already done it in our group chat, we wanted to say, Happy birthday, Michael. Actually, turn on the recording software. Need, need mm-hmm. it. Minor details. Mm hmm. Minor details. Not the title of episode 194 as we slowly creep to the big 200 on We Were Gamers, a podcast about the things we do and want to have time for, though sometimes we don't. Hello. Welcome. I'm Andy. This is JJ. He's going to talk now. Hello, it's me. And Michael's here too. Hi, friends. I think I introduced the wrong podcast. I think we need to do Winging It instead. <laughs> oh. <laughs> is, there, is there more wing news? There is wing news. <laughs> Lunar New Year was this past, I don't know how much time, and I feel like a jerk for saying that. <laughs> Well, it happened, and then it got extended because of the coronavirus, and there was a whole thing. Yeah, but we went to Disneyland, but they had wings on the specialty items for eating. Yes, Mm. they did. They have those, like, uh, JJ, you've been to Disneyland when they do the wine festival? Yes, I have. And they have the amazing food that goes with said wine festival. Mm -hmm. They also do those booths for the Lunar New Year. And oh, they have fun. Uh, themed foods as well, one of which was firecracker wings, real wings with bones and everything, which surprised me at Disneyland. Yeah, you would think that that would cause like a cleanup problem, but apparently not. They were quite good. I think what surprised me most was the quality of the meat. They were not like frozen wings. Okay. There was a heavy amount of meat on the wing. And the skin, you could tell, was not like deep fried or anything like that. It was baked or or some quality cooking method that I could tell. And they were very tasty. But what? how spicy were they? Because that's what I need to know about. On the We Were Gamers Spice scale. A, a definitely universally recognized, well-known, and understood scale by everyone. <laughs> yes. Wherein? Internationally accepted. <laughs> Wherein we probably eat too much spicy food and are immune to the lower ends of it. Right, yes. Though claim not to be heavy spice eaters when it comes to the high end. I would say slightly above mild. Okay. But there there was flavor on there. Yeah. That's good. Uh Uh-huh. The We Were Gamers heat scale is actually based upon my wife, I think. So if she can eat it, and how many times determines the level near mild that we are. Right, yes. <laughs> oh, man. Did you like them last year? I don't know. They were good this year. Yes. Yeah, okay. I liked them last year. And they do, They the one of the booths at the Food and Wine Festival has done wings for the last couple of years that have okay. also been pretty good. Well, then we'll have to, in what, two months, I think, the Food and Wine Festival is? It might be sooner than that, actually, because it's usually during this time of the year when they need APs to show up. No research. No, I don't. Also, AP is a thing that is generally understood and well known by every person who listens yes, to this so podcast. Yes, so those are, those are annual pass holders at, at Disneyland. Okay. It's not all of us live the Disney life, Andrew. We, we're not deep in that lingo. Okay. So, you know what? You're hosting now. <laughs> <laughs> I was doing it for the audience, to be fair. I totally knew what you were talking about. I, I know. I, uh, but so maybe I, you know, I I have to admit. I was a little under the weather over the weekend. Not sick, sick. I wasn't down for the count or anything. But maybe I'm slower in my brain than I think I am. You know, have you ever had that moment where you're just like, I dropped that and I don't know why. You just sort of stare at it for a second Uh before it registers. I Uh need to pick that up. Yeah, that happened to me uh, after dinner here. So maybe I'm a little slower than I thought. Okay, this is we're off. We are way off here. The rails winging it was fun. That was good. That's a good callback to a previous episode for folks who have listened to We Were Gamers for uh-huh. a while, which is a good good thing to do. Are you going to solve some of our oopsies of things we forgot to talk about over uh, the last couple of weeks? Yeah, we could definitely do that. 
Um, hey, Andrew, didn't we talk about like building a computer or something for a yeah, while? Last week I opened the podcast by being like, hey, we're going to do that thing and finish off the sub... No, well, not finish. See, I'm telling you, man, I'm not there all the way. Uh, we, I, I promised component class and we didn't do it. Yeah, we totally didn't. Yeah, this is mostly my fault because I think like seven or eight times we got derailed. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> our two quick, our two quick news points kind of spiraled into great. I honestly thought that I had a good, yeah. I had a good bearing on those news stories, and I said they're gonna say that all of our ideas still stand, and then we elaborated on that. <laughs> <laughs> True, we were gamers fashion. The rails came off immediately. <laughs> all right, well we're ten minutes into this one, so let's get back on the rails quick. So I think we had mentioned the last kind of thing that we hadn't talked about was software and programs and operating systems to run on your computer. I don't know how much there is to talk about with this stuff, but we should say at least, you know, if we think there's any like key things you need to have here. I'm going to say something key up the top is we should start with OS. Yeah, we should. And definitely building a computer, JJ. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna I'm gonna start with the one that I know. Don't ins- try to install Mac OS. Bam, done. Now you're down to two. Right. Since you built the computer yourself, the Mac OS thing isn't gonna work. Uh, people create some things called Hackintoshes and blah blah blah. Don't bother. At- and those work only if you build specific components, in which yep. case you didn't need to listen to our class at all. Yeah, do uh, your own thing. So the thing Google you can Hackintosh do... Google Hackintosh 2020, and you will get instructions on how to build one. Yeah. Uh, we were talking about building PCs generally, which means the only operating systems available to you really are any of many different versions of Linux or Windows. And you're for gaming, you probably want Windows. Yeah, That's otherwise really you're going to have to trick the, the computer discussion. and the games and everything else to not realize you're running not Windows. And I wouldn't recommend installing Linux to anyone who doesn't already know their way around computers or uses them for work or something. Yeah. I will I admit something on this podcast. I've built six computers in my life or more, probably more. I've never installed Linux on any of them. Reasonable. I think I have only ever used Linux for um, boot disks for solving problems. Mm. There, there are a few good versions of Linux for that specifically. So uh, I've used Linux every day at work. Uh, I've done some personal computers that it ran it for doing work type and project type stuff. But generally for gaming, all my PCs use Windows. And at this point, I think also we should just say you should be using Windows 10 because the other ones are now unsupported. Uh, so I guess that kind of rules out the what about Windows 7 question, which is not a question anymore. Uh, don't do that. I mean, in general, just skip every other Windows operating system it tends to be a good rule of thumb. I don't think we're going to get another one for yep, quite a while. I kinda- I kind of agree with Andrew. They seem to be moving to the, like the live service kind of model here. Yep. I think Windows 10 uh, will be like OS 10, right? OS 10 is on like 10 point, 12 point, whatever. They could have, out, you know, moved to 11 or whatever, but it doesn't, it just doesn't make any sense anymore. And for folks worrying about the cost, uh, if you, you can still get Windows 10 for free. Uh, that's a thing that you can do. If you have a computer that used to have a Windows 7 installation that was legitimate, you can still upgrade that to Windows 10 for free. Uh, So, you know, don't spend money you don't need to there. Uh, Obviously, though, if you have built this computer from nothing and have no operating system to install, yeah, the Windows 10, you know. I guess we should explain what OEM is also, because people will buy Windows OEM and then not understand what they bought. Sure. OEM stands for Original Equipment Manufacturer or something like that, I think. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, And basically, it is the version of Windows 10 that you would buy if you were a company like Alienware or HP or one of these companies that then installs pre-built Windows 10 on PCs for people. 
as opposed to a Windows 10 home license or whatever that normal people would buy, you would want the OEM one because then you own the full copy and can install it over and over again, as opposed to only being able to install it once or a certain number of times. Over and over again, one at a time, to be clear. Yeah, only one at a time, but definitely one one concurrent (laughs) install. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, that's about it. Install Windows, keep it updated, let it do its own thing, and you'll be fine. Yeah. It has built-in virus software now, by the way, so don't go crazy with like McAfee yeah, scans and stuff. Don't. In fact, don't get any of that crap. The built-in Windows one is very good, and it's free, and it comes with your OS. Don't I had to convince weird. people multiple times that that existed and that it was good. Yeah, it's very yeah. good. All those other ones are bad. Don't use them. They actively harm your computer in a lot of cases. And they give you pop-ups you don't need. It's just better. Just stick with the Windows one. Yes. All right. Uh, so beyond that, I personally don't have a ton of software that I think everyone needs to have. Well, we should we should mention there is software everyone needs to have. Oh, I, I'm saying I personally don't think there's a lot. Now, there is some. I'm not saying that you guys don't think that. Uh, well, so if you think there is some, let me hear it. Well, I want to know. some software called drivers we haven't talked about. Okay. Those are going to be things that uh, you need in order to make other programs run typically. Mm-hmm. So things like that video card we, sp- we spent a lot of time talking about. Uh, you're going to have to go to the website for the manufacturer of that card and download what they call drivers, which make the computer understand what is installed in it better than the BIOS reading a video chip and understanding to vil- send video signal to it. I don't know how better to describe what a driver does, really. <laughs> these, these days, what the updated video card drivers typically do is contain optimizations and other pieces of software that make your games run better. Uh, however, Andrew is correct that you should definitely install those. Um, absolutely. Yeah, you need that stuff. For sure. And a lot of your peripherals may come with drivers that you may or may not need. So let's say you buy a mouse and it has four buttons on it. You probably don't need to worry about drivers for your mouse. But if you dry, buy a Logitech MMO mouse with 100 buttons on it, you're going to need the drivers to install so that the program that manages all those buttons on the mouse is on your computer and you can do that. Or if you buy a fancy keyboard with a bunch of macro keys, yep. similarly... Uh, you you need a program that allows you to set that stuff. And that's kind of what I do first is is I get the clean install on. I grab all the drivers I know I need uh, uh, and then go from there. Yeah, it, typically you're going to need to have set up your internet and all that stuff by that point because all these drivers are on the internet. So, you know, hopefully you you got a cord plugged or, in your router whatever, to your computer. Or figured out your Wi-Fi or whatever you're doing Um, because that's and some of these drivers the video game or the video card drivers in particular can be pretty big I think a clean install of those things can run upwards of 700 megabytes or something so Mm -hmm. it's not not small stuff Um, oh well you know what here here's a good question Michael yeah what is what are you accessing the internet through on your computer I have a wireless card Uh, mm, sorry what program interface do you use to read things on the internet? Oh, you're What's saying your browser? Like, um, I use Google Chrome. Okay. Uh, so you really got three choices here on this one uh, for internet browser. You get your built-in Microsoft Edge, which these days is a Chromium-based browser, I think. Although that depends on how far you've updated your Windows since you installed it. <laughs> <laughs> uh the newest one I understand is not that bad. I have not used it. Uh, Google Chrome is the other one, and Firefox are the. Those are kind of the three. You Basically, could install Safari, by the way, if if you have an iPhone and you want it to sure. be synced to your like iCloud so that your website's open. Mm-hmm. Or yeah. Opera also. Uh, yeah, another thing you could install. Well, people may not know that Safari does work on Windows, so I have to mention it. But I don't use yeah. it on mine. Uh, so those are all options. Uh, these days, I think almost all of them render pages well, and we don't have to tell people to not use the built-in one. <laughs> they um, patch is, that memory leak in Firefox. Uh, Fire, Firefox still uses a lot of memory, but these days Chrome doesn't not use a lot either, so <laughs> it's kind of the same. Um, 
so you know you you get your choices there uh it all kind of works i usually just keep two to three with. installed just because sometimes weird stuff happens it can be helpful sometimes if you're wondering like why is this web page all weird and then you open it in a different browser and it's like totally fine yeah i have a lot of so. accounts too so i keep logged into different ones so i can just open different browsers if i need to log into different accounts mm-hmm. Auto- automatically all right those are like uh, the main things people need yeah uh then there is stuff you will probably want you will probably want like really basic like hey how do i watch a video on this computer type software vlc that's vlc uh there really isn't any other recommendation there some people say media player classic which is not a bad program of course but i think vlc is just easier to use for most people at this point yeah um don't install flash on your computer anymore well there's no point because it's going to be discontinued by everything soon enough yep but people still install it and people still try to get you to install it yeah, don't do that. There's there's nothing that needs it, and anything that tells you that it needs it is probably trying to put viruses on your computer or something. <laughs> mm-hmm. Or you're trying to play games from 2001, and those need to not be played anymore. That's just the solution <laughs> there. <laughs> Actually, I think someone did take a bunch of those old Flash games and archive them somewhere that you could play in a modern browser. So nice. go find that. Good for them. Yeah, but Or a lot was, of them anyway. There was just an article about that somewhere. Yeah, so do that instead. Don't install Flash. Um, is there anything like really that we're missing here? Um, so depending on what you're gonna gonna be doing, you might want something like uh, a tool suite, like Microsoft Office. Okay, yeah, yeah sure. Like productivity software, if you need yeah. Excel, but there, obviously there are, or that kind there of are stuff. free versions that you can get that have all the same functionality. If you don't want to. Pony up the cash for Microsoft's versions. Yeah, the Google Sheets stuff. Right. Yeah, and Google and and uh, and Office itself is a uh, subscription type model now, I think, as well. So mm-hmm. not having to get on, get on that train is probably best for everyone. Yeah. Uh, if I you really don't have am to. not. Okay, derailment time. This is true of Photoshop as well. It has become anything Adobe has started to switch to this model. Why? <laughs> Why, why, why can't we just buy a license? I mean, Andrew. I know. You don't need me to explain this to you. I know. Why? It's really just. They make more money so, this way. That's it's why. so mean. I understand yeah. sunsetting software, but like creating these bloated subscription things where they're just sort of slowly patching stuff, you know? So the license model allows them to basically put a recurring cost on you and by proxy any business or whatever that wants to use these tools in such a way that the business cannot continue operating unless they are paying the costs. So that even if a business is struggling to pay all their bills, they're going to pay the cost to keep the license going because they need it to do the things to pay the bills. So it's a pretty devious and really terrible business model for consumers. but they own the software. You can't can't get it any other way, really, legally. I guess it prevents piracy, too. All right. Uh, yeah. I, mm-hmm. Anyway, uh, you know, if you need Photoshop, you know, you got to deal with them. That's their thing. So yeah. there's uh, really not yeah. many better. I've been trying to use the built in paint paint 3D, which is supposed to be similar. Mm-hmm. It's just not as good. The tool uh, set they- is just so much better better in photoshop there is a uh, free version of a paint thing called paint.net oh which has layers and stuff but oh. is not not like look it's not photoshop well there's also uh, but it is better than the built-in one <laughs> even there's, paint, a, yeah. there's gimp yeah gimp is also a pretty decent image editor i've used that on linux before um it, it is open source and runs on linux Yep. But also hmm. uh, Windows. Also on Windows. Uh, it has a lot of features and can do many things that Photoshop can, but people that have used Photoshop are going to be very confused because nothing is in the same place. <laughs> well, that's so they don't get sued. Uh, also, it's 
because it's open source, you have no idea when features are going to be added or how things are going to work. Uh, sure. Like basically, they don't have people working on UI design, so <laughs> understand it might be a little fiddly. Uh, but it is very powerful, and you can do a lot of stuff with GIMP for sure. Nice. Well, I'm. I didn't know of this one. See. This is why we're doing this. I'm downloading it right now. I should probably actually, not download it during the podcast, actually. Yeah, that's actually not the greatest call. <laughs> uh, but actually, Michael, I didn't know that it ran on Windows. I had only ever used it on Linux. Yeah, it before. shows Windows yes. right here. I can yeah, download I have, it after the podcast. Years ago, cool. I had it on my on one of my laptops. That's fantastic. Cool. This looks mm-hmm. like a great program. It is. It is. It's it it does a lot. Like for being open source, it has a ton of functionality. Good. Yeah. People people have and it still has a community from what I understand. So there's a decent amount of stuff. It's also showing Mac OS on here as well. This mm-hmm. is why we're doing this software thing. <laughs> mm-hmm. Kind of out of ideas on what essentially might need to go on a computer because yeah. a lot of it comes built in. If you really need word processing, but you don't want to use anything else, you could always use like text edit. And... Yeah. Or, you know, I mean, and the Google sheets and Google drive and Google docs and all that stuff are there if you really need them. So maybe we should do one, one minute or two on like quick setup of a computer too. Cause I know with the new windows taskbar, I went in and turned off all those panes. Uh, I don't know if you know, like the opening up the like start menu mm-hmm. and then it had mm-hmm. like all those, like click this for the store, click this for the, and just all that st- animated stuff and weather stuff. Mm. There's a few things like that that I think you should probably turn off to kind of clean up your computer so that it runs better. Um, counterpoint, I leave all that stuff on and it doesn't bother me. <laughs> oh, okay. I just thought, you know, memory usage it, and stuff like that. I mean, you know, it is totally, it, it is customizable uh, at some level eventually once you get down to, you know, you can dig into the settings menu and turn a lot of that stuff off if it bothers you or remove it. Um, or have that pain not be there. Uh, for instance, the Cortana bar, I wish I could get rid of. Oh, better. man. Uh, the little search thing. The search uh, bar? I use that yeah. all the time. Not a big fan. I wish so I could I turn got... off Cortana. You can kind of disable it, but it doesn't really... It's a hacky thing. It doesn't really work. Okay. <laughs> At least the, the logo isn't there. The little blue thing is gone, but it doesn't really... Ah. Uh. It still hits the internet. Everything else you would install is going to be for a purpose, and you will know what that purpose is because you're the one with the purpose. Nice. I like to ins- I like to install stuff that like you know monitors my hard drives and my heat and my temperature and all that stuff and network traffic and whatever. But you know that's a personal preference. Counterpoint. Not. I have none of needed. that stuff installed. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say totally not needed. So. Yeah. Um, I was just going to say, do we want to get into some, uh, some gaming specific stuff? I love the give, idea. Give people a, a quick recommendation of a, a software piece or two. I'm, I'm nodding the Jack Nicholson nod. All right. Dot, dot gif. But you have to lead. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Give us one. Um, uh, well, it's, I, I suggested, and then I'm going to lead with something that's actually not gaming related. Yeah. Uh, nice. <laughs> so <laughs> true. We were, so we were gamers today. <laughs> um, I, for a long time, um, so I read a lot of books uh, and for a long time I was a, a physical media person I, and I still prefer the feel of a book in You had hand. better be picking the right software for this or I'm going to fight you. <laughs> Um, but I have, I have slowly come around to the convenience of having an e-reader. Um, and so a piece of software to help keep an e-library organized is really nice. And so I have been using Caliber for that. Yay. Yay. You picked the right one. (laughs) Uh, yeah. Yeah. And it's not just to organize it. So it's all the metadata is searchable and you can auto convert to different, uh, File you, formats, let's say you yeah. get a you buy a book from somebody and it's like the wrong format or something you can convert formats and stuff yeah like you that. need to go from epub to moby yep or to whatever the proprietary amazon one thing is yeah, or a- whatever azw yep well amazons uh, can read mobies also and epubs but yeah. some some it doesn't matter caliber is a great program and yes. updated insanely a, amount for oh, free every program. time i open it <laughs> I in don't fact, understand. I, I don't open it very often because I don't need to update. Like, I'm probably 15 versions out of date. And so I just, <laughs> yeah. like, I just let me wait, man. Yeah. <laughs> Till I need it again. Uh, yeah. Great piece of software there. That's a good one to have mentioned. Okay. On to games. Okay. 
All right. Andrew, do you have a games specific or closer to game specific? Maybe. <laughs> I mean, most pe- people should probably install Steam. Yeah. The the best answer, probably. If you want a storefront for games, Steam is the most popular one. I'm going to yeah. do a part two suggestion. Every one of your game things you install, because there's going to be many, Battle.net, Epic, GOG, Origin, Steam, you play. I mean, we can keep going. They all have their own program. Turn off the little tick that makes them start at startup. Yeah. In my unless opinion. you unless you really want it. Like unless you're super duper on top of or like you play let's say you're a Fortnite person. Then leave the epic one so it boots on startup, right? Mm-hmm. But like if you don't have anything installed in your GOG app or your origin app, don't you know, don't have a boot on startup. I don't know. I mean, is that what you were headed for? Was like we should all install uh, Steam? Michael, I mean, I or think- were you thinking of something else? No, I, I mean, I would have gone with Steam. I think it's it's definitely the one you should start with. Mm-hmm. But what, yeah, it, what were you hoping for there in the games software department? Was it did, was that it? Well, no, I was going to I I might have gone one level up and said that with the new overhauls that they've done and the new integrated functionality that GOG is a good choice okay. if you've already got, um, you know, games in several different storefronts. Yeah, that new uh, GOG Galaxy launcher is pretty good, and it, it it does the... You still have to install all of the other storefronts and to get the games to work, um, but it is a good place to kind of manage and track all the various games across oh my gosh. the supported ones. I just realized that I could try and do that through GOG, try and launch. If you haven't heard <laughs> my story about launching Jedi Fallen Order last week... Imagine if I tried to launch it through the GOG launcher. How many more steps would it take? Uh, it would be the same number of steps, I suspect. Oh, you man. would just have to sign in oh, to man. the service through GOG. Okay, okay. Mm-hmm. Fair enough. Yeah. It's, uh, man, that was a real saga. <laughs> <laughs> Thankfully, not a Skywalker saga. Uh, ooh. Mm. Nice. Uh, and I think you guys covered the important stuff. Uh, I think that, you know, how to get games, what you can do for games, what games can do for you. Uh, I think I would say if there's another piece of software that you need to install in order to play this stuff, you well, there really isn't anything else you need to install in order to play this stuff other than, you know, the games themselves. But I might recommend that you go look for some good emulators because those are things that sort of run outside of all of these. (laughs) I knew it. Uh, and I'm laughing because I knew it. that was funny. and l- and let you play games that uh, aren't necessarily on all of these storefronts, uh, which you may already own copies of. Mm-hmm. Which yep. you had better already own copies of. I mean, we're not talking about breaking the law, Andrew. We're talking about legal software uh, uh-huh. that you can own. Sure. So yeah, mm-hmm. Dolphin uh, in particular is very good if you're yep. into GameCube Wii games. And and it does others, so Dolphin might be the easiest one. GameCube and Wii are the things it does mostly. Is there <laughs> more? <laughs> I think Dolphin does more. Okay. I no research. I'm not gonna yeah, do it. No research. Uh but you know, that's a good one. Uh there's a whole bunch of PlayStation emulators. There's uh if you're gonna do a Super Nintendo emulator, may I recommend Hygan? Uh or it used to be called B SNES, but you should it, you should get high gain. That's you could also one. get an SNES classic and hack it. And then you have yeah. an emulator you and hardware. Too. Yeah. Yeah. SNES classic is a uh, sweet emulator. It's a pretty good emulator <laughs> <laughs> for SNES. All right. Yeah. Um, all that stuff is cool. Uh, MAME, of course, has 80 oh, million. Oh, gosh. Games. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, this is the beginner class. So, so yeah. We're not going to... We're Okay. We may have gone too far off the rails. Yeah. <laughs> Let's talk about sound card. No. Mm-mm. Oh, God. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I, as the nominated host, I have to close this discussion down. <laughs> Let's try and talk about sound cards. <laughs> okay. Oh, I, all right. I think that... In, puts the final uh, cap on our series beyond actually building the thing. So stay tuned for the next time we mention this for when we're going to actually build the thing. (laughs) One day. Some, someday, someday. Nominal host, go. (laughs) Yay. 
So uh, we did that. This is, since we're already talking about things that aren't related to games, let's continue. <laughs> uh, you guys do movie stuff? Movies? I was one of the 20% that didn't do what you're about to ask about. Who, what, huh? Uh, the, the viewership for this event was down 20% year over year. Oh, okay. I'm always one of that 20%, apparently. Okay. <laughs> I basically never watch the Oscars, which are a thing that happened. Uh, um, yeah, yesterday. Do we have comment? Michael, did you... Okay, you frequently see a lot of these movies, right? Yes. So All? The wife, the wife and I, for the last four years now, I think four years running, maybe even longer than that, um, have done either the AMC or the Regal um, Best Picture Showcase. Which I think so, is valuable. I don't think it's invaluable that they make a giant list of good movies and that we should watch them. I just don't have time for the thing that <laughs> goes with the watching. You mean you don't have time for the watching? I have. I w- okay. If I'm going to spend three hours watching the Oscars, I could instead watch Parasite. Twice. Okay. So that's my or, point. Or almost all of the Irishmen. This is. Look. <laughs> uh, I did do that, by the way. And it was. We good. watched it in one sitting. Oh, man. <laughs> uh, here's an example of what I'm talking about. Michael got to watch it in one sitting because I've made life choices. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> I had to watch it in three sittings. So uh, Oscars are something that have fallen from an annual tradition into we were gamers. Do you have time for this or should you spend it on something else? If Michael watched all these movies, we should hear about them. Yeah. Yeah. So we um, we went with because we had the the Regal movie pass this year and it worked for the entire slate of best picture. We just use that to go see all of the, the showcase. Um, we trying to think, what did we see first? We got started a little bit before the showcase actually started. We caught little women while it was still in theater. Um, I'll, I'll run down. I should run down what all the movies were. Yes. Um, so it was little women, 1917, once upon a time in Hollywood, Joker, parasite, Ford versus Ferrari, marriage story, the Irishman. Oh, goodness. I'm missing one. Jojo Rabbit. Jojo Rabbit. Thank you. Uh, so those were the nine movies that were nominated this year for Best Picture. Seven of them were in theaters. Uh, Marriage Story and The Irishman were Netflix released. Um, After so they theaters, were... though. They they have to be theater released. Uh, yeah, but there are they have to be theater released, but you could you can release them for one day in one theater. And it no, counts. they changed the rules this year. Oh, did they? Yeah, it's got to be like multiple weeks of release. Okay. Basically, they said Netflix has to release movies in theaters for longer than one day. Ah, that was okay. the rule change this yeah, year. They, so, they did that for the, fir- the first year, which I think was last year. Yeah. So Marriage Story and um, the. the uh, and also American Factory, which is a Netflix film that won an Oscar. Yes, um, for documentary. For documentary, were all theater released for weeks before their Netflix release. Okay. Fun yeah, fact. So, I have seen one of these movies. I have seen... Have you not finished The Irishman? I know you started. Oh, no, sorry, Irishman. Yeah, okay, yeah, we saw Irishman. Okay. And JJ, what did you see? Uh, Ford versus Ferrari. Okay. That's that on brand. Mm-hmm. Yep. Great movie. Yeah, I enjoyed. That was it. the that was the last one that we saw in the in the set, and it's it's just a lot of fun as a movie. Was it uh, drama or more like world's fastest Indian, mostly excitement? I would say it's a lot of drama, but also some excitement because there was a, they won for sound editing, so one would hope there's a lot of cars. Yes, yeah. there's definitely a lot of cars. Okay. Um, and my, great performances in that one from Christian Bale and Matt Damon. Here was my opinion of the Irishman, since it's the only one I get to comment on. It was a good one of those. Yeah. That is a, <laughs> if if you like Scorsese, this will scratch that itch for sure. I'm, and you have 10 hours to watch. Yeah. <laughs> it's no longer than those Lord of the Rings movies were. So if, as long as you're into it, it's, it's, it's slow. There's a lot of shots that just linger. There's a shot where they... He closes a door and it went like I knew what was going to happen because it was a Scorsese moment of like a closed door staying closed and then cutting away. And it still went a beat longer than I expected it to go. 
I think the best commentary I heard on it was from the, from the Oscars last night where they said, I loved the first season of the Irishman on Netflix. Yeah. <laughs> They're not wrong. <laughs> it's one of those movies that like, I don't know if you've seen earlier Scorsese movies uh, recently, but they have like this, the story and then they wrap up fast, right? The, he lingers in the the moment of the story he wanted to tell, and then he, he kind of comes to the end, and it's kind of like, uh, and all of these these wise guys got knocked off. Thanks for coming. Instead, he does the these get wise guys got knocked off part throughout the whole movie. They they like literally JJ at certain points pause the movie, and then say this guy got capped in the head in front of his house. That's the thing you usually put in the movie. Yeah. Yeah, but they didn't have time yeah, for it because it's three and a half, and a half hours, hours long. long. <laughs> but instead, he uses the three and a half hours to stick with the story until like it's really, really over. I don't want to ruin what that means in case you see it. Okay, I'm not really interested in seeing it. Oh, okay, that's uh, fine. You okay. also don't need to ruin it for listeners. other people. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, it's a good one of those. All right. So uh, Michael has eight movies left to discuss. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. We don't have to talk about all of them if he doesn't have opinions. But yeah, let's, let's um, hear it. Yeah. yeah, I'll give I'll give a little bit of rundown here and there. Um, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood was a little slow to me um, until the last maybe 20 minutes of it, in which case it becomes extremely Tarantino. So, so Quentin Tarantino killed everywhere. directed it. Uh, it's yeah, blood getting killed gore. everywhere. There's yeah, there's kind of one big culminating scene at the end of it where everybody dies you know, in it. <laughs> I'm guessing I don't. Those aren't spoilers. I'm just no. He no. said very Tarantino, <laughs> so I'm just picturing there's, there are some people with Thurman killing everyone is what I'm picturing. There's no crazy eighty eight, but you know, okay. It, um, but yeah, it to me the the pacing meandered a little bit in the beginning. Um. There were there were some good moments, and it's a, it's a good movie on the whole. Um, but the you're you're just kind of, or at least I was just kind of waiting for the payoff. Um, I think my favorites. Um, I I couldn't pick just one this year. Um, and my two favorites were uh, Parasite, which won for Best Picture, and Jojo Rabbit. And that one is the movies, one of all of them. That I'm most desiring to see and find it hard to find screenings of and time. Jojo Rabbit. Yeah. Yeah. Um the the movies are so drastically different from each other that it's it's almost impossible to compare them. Um Jojo Rabbit felt like a Wes Anderson movie. And if you hadn't told me that it wasn't, that is probably what I would have assumed. I think that's what he was going for. Taika Waititi, who won, yes. by the way, for Adapted uh, Screenplay. Yeah, I was going to say he won for Best Screenplay for that movie. Adapted Screenplay. Yes, the because Best, screenplay, and best went, screenplay went to uh, Parasite. But yeah, it's just, it's one of those things. It's a story, for, for people who don't know, it's a story about a little boy at the end of the war in Germany whose imaginary best friend is Adolf Hitler. Because he's in the Hitler Youth. Yes. It's not like he just imagines he hate all Hitler. Right. He's, you know, he's sort of been brainwashed by the culture and he he thinks that uh Adolf Hitler is a figure worthy of his his adoration and worship um and so he creates this fantasy best friend relationship in his head. <laughs> um Adolf Hitler played by Taika, Taika <laughs> who is a yes. native does- New Zealander by the way. He does. He does. It's it's one of those things where you hear the idea of the movie and a part of you kind of wants to cringe at it. No. And it it takes. Well, I, I'll just say I think it's the kind of thing that takes kind of a deft handling of it to not stray too far in one direction with the portrayal. And I think he did a really good job of of walking that line i've always thought he does a great job of walking that line mandalorian uh thor ragnarok he 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 nails it i think yeah so it was um incredibly funny um definitely the funniest of the movies that were nominated this year but also told told just like a really touching story so i would i would say definitely find a way to watch that one 
Um, and then Parasite, which I think the best thing that I can say about Parasite is it made a lot of the news because it was a Korean language film and wound up being the first foreign language film to win Best Picture. But all of the things that made it so good would have been just as good in any language. So what it's is a, it's a kind of about because I I don't know much about so it. So it it starts off as a boy who's has a good friend come home from college um with a job opportunity. Um so his his friend tells him I'm going to study abroad for a year. I want you to take over for me in teaching English to the daughter of a wealthy family. Um, so like tech mogul, um, always off on business trips. He has his wife and kids at home. Um, and so they bring in private tutors for their education. Um, and the, the boy forges his credentials to get in, um, into the house and winds up finding ways to, scam hit the rest of his family into jobs working for this wealthy family hmm. and it all it all seems to be going right until it all goes horribly wrong i was going to say that a more general answer to that question is that it deals with wealth and wealthy like disparity between wealth and uh less wealthy and class kind of structure there so you thought parasite and and jojo were top your top two yeah, for nice. me, those those were the, the two best this year. Well, sound cool. pretty good, though. It's curious because I think, personally, going in, I expected the Academy to do the standard thing that the Academy does and give the award to the big war movie. <laughs> so I'll, I'll say about 1917 that it's, it is the big war movie, but it also is almost more so a story of the the individual journey that these two soldiers are on set against the backdrop of a war ah see that is like the context i don't have because i definitely did not see it yeah. <laughs> it's not a yeah. from what i saw it didn't seem like a dunkirk massive scale thing as much as the scale was in the backdrop and then these guys had to go on their separate more private ryan style Yes. Yeah. Much, much more that style than a Dunkirk where you have the big sweeping battles and, you know, there's, there's a little bit of that, but it's, it's, it is literally just sort of like the setting that they are running through, literally running through <laughs> as fast as humanly possible. That is your, we were gamers, uh, movies minute. Uh, I guess I can chime in a movie that absolutely did not win any awards because it came out this year instead of last year. Uh, I saw Birds of Prey and I liked it. I uh, I you, heard that one's not doing so hot. You liked it, yeah? I enjoyed it. Okay, that is the that is the second review of I saw it and I actually liked it that I have heard today. Is this a controversial opinion? I thought it was not doing. I thought the reviews came out pretty okay on it. I'm just surprised. I didn't. It doesn't have the backing that Suicide Squad or anything else did. You know when it was everywhere and. That's saying something, you know, to start with about. Well, they took the only popular character from yeah. the Suicide Squad movie and uh -huh. made a movie about her and then uh, put a bunch of women in it. And it was directed by a woman. And then apparently a bunch of the action scenes were directed or choreographed or whatever that role is. I, I'm not a movies person, if you can't tell. <laughs> fight, fight choreographer. <laughs> fight choreographized uh, by one of the uh, directors from the John Wick series, who is also a stunt choreographer. So uh, I, I like John action. Wick. I like the action. There was a lot of like, it was easy to follow what was going on in the fight scenes. And yeah, I wasn't like lost and confused all the time. Oh, that so, yeah. that's like good. every every single Zack snyder movie right or like even some of those star wars movies we've had that discussion where you're just like i this is fun to look at but i have no idea where we are what we're doing too many smash cuts yeah every, there's no coordination between where if you watch a john wick you know exactly what direction he moved where in between every frame it's always connected to the last frame 
Mm-hmm. So while there may be close ups of him blocking a, a punch or something like that, it punches back out and he's still in the same place and it's well shot and choreographed at the same time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The story is very madcap, but of course it would be since it's following a character, Harley Quinn, who is that very madcap that way. So were the other birds that they used in this one, Oracle and did they use all those birds of prey or was it different characters? Uh, yeah, it is the comic Birds of Prey team. Uh, okay. Huntress, yeah. Cassandra Cain, yep. Black Canary. Katana? No. No Katana? Because she was in Suicide what Squad. Is Kata- what is Katana's real? Oh, no. No one else from Suicide Squad. Oh, okay. I didn't know if they would have brought her over since she was in Suicide Squad. No. All- Harley Quinn is the only person from the Suicide Squad movie. Okay. And not knowing the plot, that you know, I don't, wouldn't know if that would have made sense or not, but. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah, it was good. I liked it. Apparently not doing so hot. So. Oh, bummer. Well, I mean, maybe you'll save it here with our giant following. Yeah, definitely. All, f- however many of you listen to this, you could go see it and have a good time also. <laughs> a dwindling amount since we decided to start taking on Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> eh. Were they really dedicated if they couldn't handle a little disagreement among friends? No. No, they weren't. That's the right. answer to your question, straight up. <laughs> See there, so th- there you go. Uh, all right. I guess could do we want to actually talk about video games for a little bit? I mean, that's really out of character for this podcast. I right know. I, I guess we could. I'm on board. You've convinced me. I'm sorry, Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> I've convinced this video game podcast to somehow talk about video games. I apologize. It's all good. Uh, <laughs> just gonna... hey, Michael. What have you been playing? <laughs> <laughs> so I've uh, I have been getting more into the meat of Breath of the Wild. Oh, I thought he was going to say Meat Boy. Oh, uh, no, I, I I don't feel like that that steep of a challenge just just at the moment. Oh, meat Boy is such a good game. I right. wonder Breath about playing Wild, Meat Boy. OK, never mind. Sorry. <laughs> cut, me off. Andrew? Cut, me off. cut me off quick no. before I start. Breath of the Wild. Let's okay. go. The thing about uh, Meat Boy, though, <laughs> rolling up that newspaper, hitting you on the nose with it. Oh, no, <laughs> don't poop me. No, uh, but yeah, it's been it's been really good. So I've um, I left it for the people who aren't in the know. The game starts out with you on a a plateau, and you have to visit the the four kind of starting game shrines and get your your first. Uh, sets of abilities that kind of see you through the game and then once you've done that the story opens up and you get a way to leave the plateau and then the game just kind of sprawls and becomes the massive open world game that it is so you have a direction to go in but that doesn't mean you can't just set off in whatever direction looks most interesting to you and start exploring best videos i've seen of that that are non-spoiler videos are people wandering into guardian areas and getting straight up murdered (laughs) yeah and you can you can kind of tell sometimes when you wind up somewhere that that maybe the story isn't ready for you to be yet well shades of dark souls there yeah but i'm if Dark Souls is anything like the small experience so far that I've had in Star Wars, you're kind of funneled and gated by the terrain and the the maps and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Is that kind of similar? So, like, I, you have I, to I choose mean, I am, to go to that area or this area or that area. I, I am saying that it is Shades of Dark Souls, okay. not that it is Dark yeah. Souls. Because in this, so, is you just literally wander yeah, it's a Everywhere. map. You just go. Yeah, yeah, you can go wherever. Yeah, see so that hill. You can climb it. It's Skyrim. Yeah, well, that that kind of gets into the the little bit of gating that might exist. Is that you? Um, you can slowly build up your stamina meter by completing more of the shrines that are dotted across the map. Um, but to start out, you only have so much stamina, and stamina lets you run, it lets you swim, and it lets you climb. And if you run out of stamina in the middle of one of those things, you will stop running, you will fall off what you are climbing, or you will drown. Ah, so uh, there's some swim. speed run tech to get around this by now, right? Undoubtedly, there is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there is. But if you're not, you know, if you're not speed running the game or wanting to take the time to learn the tech, if you're just playing it casually, then you are you are gated a little bit by your character's growth. You're playing so into you, the man's hands. You can't instantly just regular climb the tallest mountain that you see 
That's what Ganon tells you. Yeah. Well, that's why I say regular because there are ways. <laughs> there are ways around it. You can you can use the uh, time freeze ability to send something flying and then jump on top of it before it starts moving and Heck yeah, launch you can. yourself across the map. Nice. Yeah. Shoot yourself up in the air, then glider over that mountain. Yep. Those those might have been some of my favorite videos. Andy was when people were trying when the game first came out and people were trying to route the speed run getting off the plateau without having to get the glider. Oh yeah. True that. Those are pretty good. I think one of, yeah, there's a lot of fun videos of this game, <laughs> especially when they learn how like the physics work of pausing things. Yep. And then like slamming them with attacks. Have you flying across the map kept yourself warm yet? And how annoying is it? So you get, it's not too bad. Um, fairly early in the game, you get a tunic that will keep you warm. Oh, okay. Um, it doesn't let you swim in water that is in a freezing area. So I have not been able to do that yet. But if you're just running through the snow, you, you throw the tunic on and it, it keeps you warm. It's just like a poncho. Yep. But yeah, so this mm. this... Uh, this game is the first of the Zelda games to really introduce weather and terrain as uh, as factors that that you have to consider. I would very much like to know what happens if you get hit by lightning. So go try that. I have I have managed to not get hit by lightning yet. I have not yet gotten anything else struck by lightning. I'm going to go ahead and guess out on a limb here. Some number of hearts are lost. When and hit by lightning. <laughs> as I am still relatively early in the game, that number, all of them. I would like potentially. To know. Oh, go ahead. Oh, uh, I was just, I'm curious if it's like a standardized heart damage number or like a percentage dam damage number. Like it always takes you down to a quarter of one heart, you know? Yeah, most things are a standard amount. Okay. A standard number as opposed to a standard percentage. You just probably get like a rubber tunic or something at some point too, which makes you immune to it. Oh yeah. yeah. Or one that seems one like a thing that game would have. Yeah. Just take make sure to take off your metal boots. Yeah, don't <laughs> wear the don't wear the metal boots. <laughs> That's a real thing, actually. Yep. I detected Andrew, you attempting to segue there. Nope. Into mm -hmm. talking about ponchos. I don't know what you're talking about. Ooh, ponchos are a thing in that Star Wars game. No. Oh no. <laughs> Was this they, a bad segue? Yeah. Did we just is. crash the train? A little bit. No, it's okay. I, I did mention ponchos. I know you did. <laughs> Let me tell you about what I've done in Star Wars. Tried on a bunch of ponchos? I sat and customized my lightsaber for quite a long time. No, no. Andrew? Uh-huh? I think I'm going to tell you something and don't get mad. Okay. I think the customization doesn't do anything. <laughs> Other than make it look cool. You can see it hanging on your belt when you're running it, around. It looks very cool. <laughs> I was surprised by that. Like how very def definitively and clearly you can see the changes in customization you've made by the thing that's hanging on your belt. I did a, a lot more exploring of the worlds that I had already been to because I realized I had missed some stuff and I wanted to uh, try... Switching it up a little bit between the keyboard and the controller. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I, the main thing I wanted to talk about today, because I'm not really fully like get into the, uh, the meat of that game yet. And I think we should have Ken back on when we do, because there's some stuff I ran into that I think he will want to talk about. I started off playing it on my PC, right? So I was playing it with the keyboard and mouse. It, that is a game where you should play with a controller. Yeah. Uh, Straight up. I was, I was going to say that uh, that Dark Souls, a similar game uh, where it technically has keyboard and mouse controls, but you should not use them. This is a world we've entered now where they're just not going to make it work for the keyboard and mouse. I mean, when you can plug a controller in and it works automatically, there's not a, like the drivers just work. You don't have to like do funny stuff to get controllers to work on PCs yeah, anymore. Yeah, yeah, and that's a good thing. I'm not absolutely saying it's not. yeah for sure. Yeah, but it is a little jarring. Yeah, yeah. It's a 
I wish all stores, I know Steam is starting to add them and I'm not sure how widespread it is, but they have like little things there that say like controller recommended Mm -hmm. or like controller required in some cases where Mm -hmm. you literally can't play it without one. Um, That should be on every storefront on a PC where it's like, hey man, they designed this for a controller, dude. You're really screwing up if you're playing with the keyboard. (laughs) Handicapping yourself. Well, it's just a lot of times now that I'm running into stuff where I like, I need to hold this and hold this while I do this. Right. It's a lot of like, uh, because I know this game is like Dark Souls, it's a lot of like blocking and like having your guard up all the time and then having you, a button ready to yeah, jam rolling the or, or uh, right. <clears throat> oh, man. The cough is setting back in. Anyway, uh, yeah, there's so right, you got to got to be blocking and then you got to hit the button to dodge in that direction. And then you got to be ready to come out of the block with an attack. And yeah, I knew that there was lightsaber customization. And then inside that menu, I found the ponchos. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. It's going to make it hard to cosplay as this character for a lot of people, I think. Is it, though? Because all you have to do is wear a poncho and have a lightsaber. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm pretty sure everyone will know instantly who you are. Well, yeah, I guess also, so. Also, I guess be redheaded. That's true. Slick your hair back. Yeah, there you go. Mm-hmm. Well, you just put BD1 on your shoulder, I guess. And then people. Oh, will yeah, that, that, will, that will give it away. There for you sure. go. Yeah. I might be looking into how to build a BD one and have it throw you Tic Tacs or something. No, I'm just going to like, uh, anytime I find a wire, I'm just going to throw him on top of the wire and hang off of him. Cool. That's how you zip line in that game. Oh, okay. You throw BD one over the wire and hold his legs. And zip line. <laughs> That's a durable droid. Yeah. Man. Wow. Yeah. 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 They make, they do make Astrobex like they used to. Oh, he's not an astromech. <laughs> Oh, okay, he's just a droid. Yeah, he's, he's a little droid. He's not an astromech droid. But he, yeah. I guess he's related to BD-0, which is the green one in that most recent movie. The little one with the wheel. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, you can change your poncho. You can change the color of the ship that you ride on called the Mantis. Cool name. Yeah. And the color of BD-1. You can change him up. Spoiler alert, I believe it is possible to change the color of your lightsaber. Yay. <laughs> I know that is a <clears throat> deeply desired feature, I'm sure. I, I'm sure it is. I mean, people love to play their way. It's a good thing. Oh, yeah. Look, you should be able to make it look cool like you want it to. That's the yeah. whole fun part about that stuff. So, yep. Anyway, ponchos and controllers. Nice. I'm not upset that we live in this world where controllers are a thing, but thank goodness they're standardized enough that it they understand you know like mm-hmm. you plug it in it knows it's an xbox 360 controller everything just works yep it converts all the the because notifications to the right button set and boy I, did we used to live in a world where it didn't do that oh <laughs> gosh and i think actually now even i don't know if this works since you're playing it through epic but i know that steam oh, i'm not playing it has... through epic i'm playing it from epic through <laughs> origin <laughs> My point was that this is a Steam feature, so I don't know if the other ones have it. <laughs> but Steam like natively supports PS4 controllers. You can just plug them in, and it, they will just work. Yeah. Uh, I, I know, mean, we I, discussed this when I started playing this game. I don't, in general, other than my Switch, have a lot of modern games going for me. Mm-hmm. I play games that are years old because we we've, we've talked about buying stuff on sale. And so this is the first time, like, not in a Switch, which has controllers built into it, obviously, that I've just, like, hoped that a modern game would be easy to play, and it is, and it's very refreshing. Anyway, ponchos. I'm done. Nice. Well, I've been playing a... a poncho. A... Nice. Yeah. (laughs) I've been playing a somewhat modern game. Uh, I'm still poking away at uh, Warcraft 3 Reforged, and... Oh, man. And uh, Magic Arena. What a disaster uh, that was. Eh, it's still doing the thing that I want to do, which is let me play the campaign. Has so. that? Have they made another we don't really care statement or anything to try and solve that situation? No, nah, the same one is the one. They released a patch that supposedly fixed a lot of the like lip syncing issues. Okay. Um, Did they release they a say, patch that makes the trees look better than the old trees? Uh, I mean, there are still like only seven polygons in the tree. So, I mean, you can't, you know, they're high res trees. That's not what I came here to talk about. I'm sorry. 
what I came here to talk about is Dark Souls because Dark Souls is a good game. Oh, so we're all on the Dark Souls train. Uh, or Dark I Souls was watching, adjacent. I was watching a streamer and apparently Dark Souls 1 has a randomizer for it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, you can uh, you can edit that game for modding now. Uh, both the Dark Souls 1 remastered and original Dark Souls 1 Prepare to Die edition, the PC versions, have uh, mods for them that you can randomize. So you can randomize items, enemies, both, and various subsets of those things. Does this recalibrate the enemies if you randomize Oh, absolutely them? not. Oh, absolutely God. Not. <laughs> uh, so I was not brave enough to try the enemy randomizer. <laughs> yeah, because uh, you could run into the first boss and it's the final boss. That's insane. If it doesn't uh, yep. scale. It, but it, it turns out that uh, you will start with a random set of items, which means you could start out with some really OP weapons, uh, which I started out with some pretty good ones. Uh, but because the like key items are going to be shuffled all around to who knows where, like the main important warping item that you get in that game, spoiler alert, there's a warping item in Dark Souls 1, I guess, <laughs> it came, a game that came out in 2011. That item could be like in just a random body on the ground. <laughs> oh no! Uh, so you need to know where all those are. You need to be able to get back and forth between a bunch of them because the bosses might just drop like a piece of trash, and you don't know which. Uh, if you have that turned on, the enemy randomizer, you could just fight who knows what boss. <laughs> like it, it, maybe it's not even a boss. Maybe it's just a regular enemy inside the boss door. <laughs> you could just have like three bosses chilling outside, and then you run through the door, and it's like a random soldier with just like a broken sword. <laughs> like you don't know. <laughs> uh, so it was very fun watching the streamer play it. And so I decided to try just the item randomization stuff. So you start with random items, all the stores sell random stuff and the prices in the stores are random also. So you can find like really crazy weapons and armor in the first store for like a hundred souls, <laughs> which oh, is like no. a really small, really small number. And then like, a key that you need to get to an area that's like 50,000 and you're just like, Oh God, <laughs> you have to grind the gold. Yep. Uh, so it's been pretty fun playing through that game again. Uh, and you know, having weapons that I would not normally have and just like, Oh, Hey, there's a body back here. What is this? Oh, I've never seen this sword before. What does it even do? Oh, Let's cool. try this. Um, so I, I've been enjoying that. Uh, and that's kind of like a little fun little thing. I don't know if I'm going to finish the game the whole way because if I get stuck somewhere and I'm just like looking for the thing that lets me progress forward for not an hour, I'm not going to beat. Uh, the game does come, the mod does come with a built in cheat cheat that says like, hey, here's where everything is. Yeah, most randomizers do that now. So it's like a little text file that gets output in a folder somewhere when you generate the generate the randomization cool yeah i don't know if i'll have the patience if it gets like really <laughs> annoying at some point can i ask oh. you for a piece of advice yes uh you got a block and a dodge oh uh-huh okay we're done no oh, sorry uh please <laughs> please ask <laughs> what is the value if any in souls style games in grinding like is there a value in staying on a planet, resetting the enemies, running through killing for experience? Or is it just, no, nah, because everything scales eventually by the end, and so you're just wasting time? I mean, Andrew, is there anything you can buy with experience? Yeah, skill points, right? Okay, so then would having more of those be advantageous? I guess so, yeah. Okay, you okay. just answered your own question there. Well, I... Uh, it, in the tr- I don't know if you get what my question is then. <laughs> right. So so like in so in uh, I, I can't answer this question about your game because I don't understand how the skill system works. Really? Uh, and we'll get into it when we talk about that game more specifically. But in Dark Souls traditional, uh and Sekiro 2, I guess, since it's pretty similar, you can just straight up increase your statistics. Uh Sekiro actually has a skill tree, so I guess that's maybe more analogous. Uh, and not all the things on the skill tree in Sekiro are, like, necessary. Right. But yeah. some of them are good and, like, might be helpful. Okay. So, yeah, it helps you. Uh, in, like, regular Dark Souls, you can just straight up increase the statistic that gives you more health. Or, yeah. like, more blocking juice or more damage or whatever. So, like, in that case, it's very obvious, like, yeah, I just make that number bigger and then hit harder. So, 
there's definitely benefit there. Got it. But you know, the whole thing of like if you're running around with fifty thousand souls and then you die, then they all drop and then you wasted a lot of time and you're sad. <laughs> yeah. But that's the game. <laughs> I learned that lesson hard early with that thing that we talked about where I just had to run back and get my XP, but I also want to say that exploring and like running around, just like looking for stuff is part of those games. Mm -hmm. So it's totally fair to just be like, ah, oh, you know, I want to go back and cruise around these worlds and like see stuff that's in the corners or whatever. That's totally. Oh, yeah. Within the spirit of those games. I, so. I get that part. This game is very pretty. I like looking at it. Nice. Michael, if people want to tell us about other pretty games that we should be playing and potentially talk about on this game, which we will not guarantee to do. <laughs> How would they do that? Uh, they can send us an email at podcast at we were um, We love receiving email from all you folks. Um, we'll read it out loud and respond to it as soon as we get it. Uh, you could also find us on Facebook, on Twitter and Instagram. We are we were gamers on all of those places. Uh, you should definitely check us out on YouTube where you can find our We Were Gamers channel and not just our regular episodes, but also the Star Trek sub pod that Andy and JJ have been slowly putting together. Ooh, Picard. Yeah. yeah coming this month. Out. Five, mm, hold on. This will. So two days after two you hear days. this, go back on any of those platforms, Michael said, because I can't remember all of them right now. I'm getting a little fuzzy <laughs> and there will be Picard talk. Lots of yes, it. yeah, we did. We talked a lot. It was really long. You probably got to listen to it in two parts. <laughs> it's like two hours. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>